welcome to another edition of the Fuji Guys. My name is Jerry and today we're going to go through the top features of the X-A2 Fujifilm camera. Uh, so please sit and enjoy. So on this new uh, camera here we do have the um, tilt screen at the back just like we did before but there is uh, some improvements to this tilt screen. So it's the same 920K display so lots of information on the screen itself. Um, but not only does it tilt uh, down as well as up, but now it actually goes all the way up. So now we have the, um, the ability to now uh, have a selfie mode, if you will, uh, for video, for doing, um, being able to see yourself and framing yourself in the video. This is also a nice feature to have as well. Uh, so what this will allow you to do is basically uh, be able to do a selfie. So in this case here, I can do my own selfie here. So I can look and take my selfie shot that way. Um, the other uh, feature that it does do, as you can see, is that it does flip the screen. So you can see here that the screen is flipped. And if you close it down, then the screen goes back into normal shooting mode uh, like so. Uh, so the screen does a, a 175 degrees, basically. So it allows you to go all the way up. And then as soon as you flip over this way, now it allows you to do the selfie mode. Now, uh, if you're in SR auto mode, uh, which is on the dial here, the SR plus, uh, this will now allow you to uh, take advantage of things like the uh, selfie, um, uh, the eye detection during the selfie as well. So face detection selfie mode will kick in and it'll automatically detect the face and automatically detect an eye. So you can pri prioritize which eye, so I'm using my own face, but you can see that it's picking up my eye um, and that I'm moving a little bit too. So it picks up different subjects and so on, but it's able to actually pick up um, the individual eyes and you can actually prioritize a left eye or a right eye. So if you're shooting right-handed or left-handed, you'll have uh, access to that mode and it'll prioritize the closest eye typically. So there's been some vast improvements on the focusing uh, with the uh, with this camera. So I'm just going to go through some of the quick um, modes. Uh, the first, when you're in SR auto mode, the first thing you'll notice is, of course, you have face detection and now eye detection. So what that means with the uh, face detection is when you have a face in the picture, let me just square that up, you can see the green box that goes around the face and then the little white box that goes around the eye. So that allows you to uh, really make sure that you're, you're getting the best possible focusing on, uh, on a portrait as well as when you're doing your selfies. Um, so when you're doing selfies and things of that nature, the eye is going to be uh, chosen as your focus point and you can actually prioritize left eye, right eye depending on uh, the circumstances. Now, if we go into P mode, uh, so just a program so that we can really see the different focusing modes, we're just going to hit the Q button here and we're going to see here the different focusing modes. So even in P mode, you can still have your face detection on as well as the eye detection as well. And that's the mode that we see here, face detection there and eye detection. So using the little dial here, I'm just going to change. So this is actually tracking AF. So you can see the little uh, yellow square there. Uh, just hit the left on the D-pad, so where the self-timer button is, and it'll actually lock on the subject itself. So now it's actually locked on the subject, and you can see that it's going to follow the subject all along. So this is great for sports and action and things of that nature with moving subjects. So this makes it really easy. You just lock on the subject and you start firing away. Um, another mode, of course, um, is manual focus. So in using the manual focus mode, that's using the ring on the front here to manually adjust your focus. And you can see the focus peak highlight. So I'm just going to bring the little um, toy car that I've got here as an example, as an image. And just so you can see how this actually work. So as you're focusing, you can see the little specular highlights that show up and what's sharp and what's not. Um, and you can use standard as well as far as the uh, focusing um, um, assistance goes. So you see a sharp, a sharp picture, you take your picture. Uh, if you don't like the image, then you can uh, certainly just by pressing and holding the wheel, it'll give you the focus peak highlight. And then you can certainly then see what's in focus and what's not. And then going back into the, uh, again, so this is our area AF. So what this allows uh, us to do now is to be able to 
really show, uh, really show what you're shooting. Now, right now, because we have the face detection on, it's picking up faces and that such. So I'm going to turn that off. I'm going to go up into the menu. In the fourth menu, you'll see face detection. So you can turn that off. And that automatically also turns off the eye detection by just naturally doing that. So now you can see that with the multi points coming up here, you can see that that area AF is kicking in, showing you what is it's actually focusing on. So it really gives you an idea of what the camera is focused on, and that way you can really make sure that you're getting um, uh, a nice sharp image with with the subject that you're aiming at. And then of course there's your regular multi-point AF, which is uh, you know got 49 points of autofocus with the uh, with this camera and with all of our X series cameras. So to get to that, you've got the AF button at the top here. You just press the AF, and now you can see that you've got 49 points. You can make those points smaller or bigger, depending on the needs. Smaller for more accurate focus, um, larger for just ensuring that, you know, for larger subjects and things like that. Uh, and then uh, you, of course, can pick any of the 49 points as well. So that's the different focusing uh, features on the uh, on this camera, and of course continuous autofocus for just regular uh, autofocus. So when you're locked on to the uh, center square, it will then uh, give you a continuous focusing as well. So something you'll notice actually on the back of the camera now is that there's actually no macro mode. Um, so now you don't have to actually put the camera in macro mode to do any focus. Uh, close focusing. Uh, you just simply with the uh, with the new XC 16 to 50 version 2 and the 50 to 230 version 2, uh, you just simply focus the distance you want to focus. So you just point and shoot. There is no macro mode anymore. It's automatic. So you, whenever you need to get that close shot, let me just give you a better angle here so you can see what I'm talking about. So if we do a close up shot, no matter how close as long as I'm within that minimum focus distance, so I'll zoom out a little bit to get that minimum focus distance, you no longer need to um, actually uh, put the camera into macro mode. Now when you're in SR Auto, that it'll actually tell you that you're in macro mode here. So it'll actually tell you, I'm in macro, go ahead, shoot, um, and you'll be fine to, to do that. So with the new 16 to 50 version 2, 3.5 to 5.6 and the 50 to 230, 4.5 to 6.3 uh, version 2 lenses. Now these ones will uh, support the uh, auto macro, so you no longer need uh, to worry about um, putting the camera into macro mode to be able to take those macro pictures. So at the bottom here, we have the Q button here at the, uh, the bottom right hand corner, and this allows us to have access to all of our uh, quality, uh, image quality um, settings. So in this particular case, I'm already set up in the manual mode. So this will give me things like my autofocus, my ISO, my dynamic range, noise reduction, image size and, and um, type. So I can go into RAW from here, um, a RAW JPEG RAW, um, or just fine JPEG, normal JPEG. Your film simulations are here as well. And things like color, saturation, uh, sharpness, tone, and uh, highlight tones are also controllable there. You have access to, of course, to your OIS if you want to turn that off. This would be recommended if you're um, doing uh, tripod work, landscape work, macro work, where you're using a tripod. We'd actually recommend you turn off your OIS. It'll actually increase your sharpness uh, uh, image quality even that much more. And of course, your self timer is lined up right there as well. You have a two and a 10 second self timer. So the Q button or the Q menu uh, gives you quick access to those, um, to the modes that you need the most. When you're in the SR auto mode, if we swing it around here, then you'll notice that you are very limited as to what you can change. So the most you can change really is your image size and your film simulation as far as black and white, standard, sepia, and so on. So there's our um, sepia uh, film simulation. When you're in manual, you get f uh, more access to the different uh, modes that you would want, like the different film simulation modes that Fuji offers. Um, so you've got your standard, your Velvia or your Vivid, your Astia or soft 
um, film and things like classic chrome. So we've added a chrome look, which is a little more muted of uh, color saturation. And of course your black and white and your sepia tones as well. So we've added uh, more film simulations uh, to the camera to give you uh, that much more creative input as well. So on the top of the, uh, the camera, we do have the dial. It has several options here, including your uh, P, S, A, and M, so your program, shutter priority, aperture priority, full manual, as well as a custom slot. We have the SR Plus, the advanced features, scene positions, and some predetermined scene positions there as well. For the SR Plus, the advantage here is that you really don't have to do anything. The camera will absolutely do everything for you. So, for example, here we're in a macro mode and you can see the little macro symbol shows up right away. I can't really show you landscape because there's not enough distance in this room to show you that. But if there was a landscape mode or a landscape opportunity, the camera would go into a landscape. If there's a portrait opportunity, the camera will go into portrait with face detection and eye detection already kicked in. If you're in, of course, selfie mode where the camera is flipped up or this lens is flipped up like that, or the, sorry, the screen is. Um, and then you get the selfie there, you get your face detection as well kicked in right away along with your eye detection. So these are the, uh, um, the different modes that it will pick up on. It will pick up on, on moving subjects. Uh, like I said, if it's a night or back illuminated uh, picture, um, night scene or, or something along those lines, it'll automatically determine that and try to maximize uh, what the camera can do. Now, of course, in the advanced features, um, or sorry, in the scene positions, you have a lot of these positions that you could program yourself. So just by going into SP, hitting the menu, and you'll see the scene positions come up right away. And then you have all the choices in the world from the night tripod, fireworks, sunset, and so on. So there's quite a bit to choose from there. But the camera will determine a lot of those on their own. And then some of the scene positions are actually on the dial itself. So your portrait enhancer, there's the landscape, and it would actually choose that one automatically. Same with sports, if it detected something was moving. Um, and the night shot, and this is one that where you're not using a night portrait, or you're not using the tripod. So you've got a few pictures on your camera now, and you want to be able to share them on social media, you're out and about. So there's got to be a way to be able to transfer those pictures to your phone. So I've got the iOS here, so I'm going to use the iOS device to, um, uh, to connect my camera to my phone and be able to then um, download them to the phone itself. So the first thing you got to do is go into the playback mode, so just by hitting the little arrow on the back here. And then after I hit the arrow on the back, I want to hit the Wi-Fi button, which is up on the top, the function button. So once I hit that, it's going to give me different in, um, uh, possibilities like being able to view and the, obtain the images on my iPad or iPhone or, or Android device, uh, sending individual images. I'm going to browse because that's probably the best way to, to do this. And right away, it goes into the communication settings. Um, and it's now sending a Wi-Fi signal and I got to pick up that Wi-Fi wi signal. So I just got to look for it here. There it is. And when you see the little check mark there, now that you see it, you can now go into the um, camera app. So there's a couple of different ones. We want the camera app for the uh, XA2 and now we can just browse the camera and hit connect. And now I can see everything that is actually on the camera itself. And I can zoom in on them. Now I can sh check for sharpness by zooming in. Yep, that's, the, that's nice and sharp. That's the one I want. And then you can hit import. And now the image is now saved. Um, if you want to be able to do multiple, you just hit the little checkbox version or box there. And then you just tap the pictures themselves, hit import, and it will import up to 30 pictures at a time. Then you can open up any of your applications that you want to do photo editing and then share them um, or just straight uh, share them straight out of the camera as it is. So um, a little bit of flexibility um, with the app and with the iPads, uh, iPhones, and Android devices as well, whether it be tablets or um, uh, phones as well. So not only can you transfer those images to your phone, but now you can also transfer them to the Instax Share Printer. So um, 
this is built in uh, through the Wi-Fi feature. So all you have to do is you go into the playback mode. Now, before you actually um, do that, you got to do a bit of a setup. So you quickly go into the menu, and uh, you'll see in the setup options, you're going to see here the Instax Share Printer Connection Settings. So that's under the third tab and you go to the right, and here you have to type in the SSID number or the serial number of the device. So the serial number is actually on the bottom of the, uh, of the device here. Now everybody knows my device number. So if you ever see me and you're actually gonna uh, wanna print to my printer, you now have the SSID to my printer. <laughs> um, and you just enter that into the uh, field here, and then it's gonna ask you for the password. In this case, it defaults, and they all default to 1111. You just hit OK. And now, uh, with the device on, we're just gonna go into the playback. We're gonna hit Menu. And in the third playback menu, you're gonna see the Instax Share Printer Print, and it's gonna now connect to the printer. So now it's connected to the printer, that easy, that quick, and it's showing me the last picture that I had up. So I can hit OK to transmit the picture, and that takes uh, about you know, 20 seconds for it to, to send it and to start printing it out like we're seeing now. And then once it's printed, it'll take um, about two to three minutes for the full image to expose, um, as with any of the Instax uh, images. So there it comes out white for now, and then over time uh, it will um, develop into um, to the image that you see here. Now, of course, it will print exactly what you're seeing on the back of the screen. So you could do a little bit of editing. If you did some raw, you could do some raw editing and then convert it to a JPEG and then spit it out. Um, or you could just print it out as is. So it makes a great, great little um, uh, device, uh, opportunity to, to, to share some pictures instantly and that they're printed. So that one I put actually upside down. So we're just going to put that right back, right side up. So now you can see the images actually developing as I speak. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions or concerns, feel free, of course, to post them in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel, and of course, follow us on the on uh, on Twitter at the Fuji Guys.